Okay, in this particular lesson, what we're going to look at is how do we solve rational equations. Uh, there's a number of steps involved. Um, first of all, what you could do, which isn't actually a necessary step at all, I'll show some examples with and without, uh, you could manipulate the equation so that all the rational expressions are positive. Uh, like I said, that is not a necessary step. Um, <clears throat> secondly, what you want to do is factor the denominators completely. What this is going to do uh, is help us to know what the common denominator is. So factor the denominators completely. Uh, it's also going to allow us to recognize what our non-permissible values are. So third step is to state our non-permissible values. Um, fourthly, is what you're going to want to do is to uh, determine what the common denominator is. This will be more easily done after you've factored. Uh, and then multiply the necessary expressions so that they all have a common denominator. I'm often just going to call that uh, CD, just to shorten some of the work. Uh, next, what you want to do is uh, multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator, because that's going to clear the fractions. And at that point, we're either going to have a quadratic equation or a linear equation to solve. Uh, so what we're going to do is solve. And then finally, uh, we just have to check that our solutions are not non-permissible values, because if they are, those solutions are actually not permitted. All right, uh, we're going to do a number of examples. So at some point, if you feel like you understand it, you might want to pause the video and try one on your own. Uh, in this first example, I am going to do the first step, which, since this term here is negative, uh, I'm just going to add him to the other side. Uh, and this can be easier and sometimes isn't. It's, it's uh, totally up to you. Um, but in this particular case, we have x over 4 is equal to 7 over x plus, and I'm going to rewrite this as 3 over 1. Uh, in this particular case, <clears throat> our denominators are already factored, so we can state our non-permissible value. Our non-permissible value here is that x cannot equal 0. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and solve. Uh, we have to multiply each expression by what our common or in order to create our common denominator. Our common denominator in this case is going to be 4x. We can create all of these rational expressions to have a denominator 4x. In order to do that, I would multiply the first rational expression by x, the second rational expression by 4, and the third rational expression by the entire 4x. Uh, what that's going to become now is x squared over 4x is equal to 28 over 4x <clears throat> plus 12x over 4x. Uh, now that we have a common denominator, what we can do is if we multiply both sides, uh, and this is a step that sometimes you can skip, you can just intuitively um, do this, but if we do multiply both sides by 4x, what's going to happen uh, is all of the 4x's, the denominators, are going to be cancelled out with that common factor. So we'll just be left with just the equation of the numerators. x squared is equal to 28 plus 12x. This is a quadratic. We should make both or one side equal to 0. So it's going to be x squared minus 12x minus 28 is equal to 0. And this factors, you could use a quadratic formula, but I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, this factors 2, x plus 2 x minus 14 is equal to 0, which gives us solutions of x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 14. Uh, now we just have to check to see if these are NPVs. So that's your last step. Let's check if those are NPVs. Uh, the answer is no, so that means that our solutions in this case are x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 14. You could also, if you want to, check those solutions, but you don't have to. Uh, they will be solutions as long as you haven't made any mistakes, but it's always valuable to check. Uh, in this next example, I'm not going to make all of the expressions positive, so I'm going to leave this expression here, but I could if I wanted to make this 3 or plus 3 minus y over 3y. You absolutely could do that and then get rid of this term. I'm just going to show the, um, how to solve it without doing that step. So in this particular case, again, um, if we like to find out what our common denominator is going to be, our common denominator, let's actually state our non-permissible values first. Our non-permissible values here are, again, that y cannot equal 0. Okay, that's our NPV, our non-permissible value. Uh, next, our common denominator in this particular case, we could create a common denominator of 12y. Okay, in order to do that, what I would do is multiply uh, this first rational expression by 12, the second 
rational expression by 4. And this last rational expression to create 12y, I would times them by 3y. Okay, uh, so what that's going to do is give us 12. And this is going to be in our numerator, be careful, it's subtract 4 times 3 minus y. So it's minus 4 times 3 minus y. You have to be careful with that. Uh, and <clears throat> that is equal to... 3y, and those are all over our common denominator. You could you could write 12y if you'd like to, uh, but I'm just going to write over our common denominator. Uh, so our next step is to multiply uh, both sides by our common denominator, because what that's going to do is what I do one side, I do to the other. We can cancel out those common factors. Okay, so in this particular case, we're left with 12 minus 4 times 3 minus y is equal to 3y. And if I distribute this negative 4, I have 12 minus 12 plus 4y <clears throat> is equal to 3y. Uh, in this particular case, since we have variables on both sides, this is a linear equation, it's not a quadratic, uh, we need to have variables on the same side. What you'll see is 12 minus 12, that cancels out. Uh, and if I get the same variable or variables on the same side, I could subtract 4y if I'd like to. Uh, so what that's going to do is actually make it 0 is equal to negative y. Or in other words, if I divide by negative 1 or do any type of step, we get y is equal to 0. Uh, the last step is to check to see if this is a non-permissible value. Uh, the answer to that question is absolutely yes. It is a non-permissible value. So that means, uh, finally, that there is absolutely no solution. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, two more examples. If you'd like to pause it, if you kind of feel like you understand the steps, you could try these last two examples. Uh, they're slightly different. In this particular case, we have to finally factor our denominators. These are not in complete factored forms. So it's a little bit difficult to determine our common denominator if we haven't factored them. Uh, so in this particular case, what I would do is rewrite this as 2 over, and it's going to be x plus 2x minus 2, plus 10 over, and I've got a greatest common factor of 6, times x plus 2, and that's equal to 1 over x minus 2. Uh, so in this particular case, you can see that our non-permissible values, are, there's going to be two of them, our non-permissible values are going to be, if you look at your denominators, uh, x cannot be negative 2, and x can also not be positive 2. Okay, so we'll revisit that at the very end of the question. As far as our common denominator goes, our common denominator, we could make a denominator in all of these of 6, and x plus 2, and x minus 2. Okay, uh, that's completely possible. So in order to do that, I'd multiply this first equation, or first rational expression, by 6. I'd multiply the second rational expression by the missing factor x minus 2. And the third rational expression, I would have to multiply by uh, two things. There's a missing 6, and a missing x plus 2. Okay, uh, so in this particular case, what we have is, in our numerators, we have 12 over our common denominator plus 10 times x minus 2 all over our common denominator is equal to 1 times 6 is 6, so 6 times x plus 2 over our common denominator. So after I multiply both sides by our common denominator, uh, you'll see that all I'm left with is a, a an equation of our numerators. So we're left with, in this particular case, uh, 12 plus 10 times x minus 2 is equal to 6 times x plus 2. And in this particular case, as long as I expand this and I'm careful, I have 12 plus 10x minus 20 is equal to 6x plus 12. And this is, again, a linear function, so we have to make sure that we have uh, the variables or the linear terms on the same side. So I have, and I'm just going to collect uh, these like terms. There's lots of ways you could solve this, but here's one of them. Uh, I have 4x minus 8 is equal to 12. And then I can add 8. And I have 4x is equal to 20 divide by 4, and I'm left with x is equal to 5. Uh, so that's my solution as long as, again, your last step, is this a non-permissible value? The answer to that is no.
Okay, so that means that it is a solution, therefore x equals 5. It's always valuable to check your solution if you have time. Uh, <clears throat> next, and last question. Again, I'm not going to, just for the sake of uh, actually making this a little bit more difficult, I'm not going to make the negative rational expressions positive by switching sides. You could manipulate it to do that. Uh, here's a negative rational expression, here's a negative one, so you could switch sides and get rid of the negative here and the negative here, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, first step is to factor our denominators. Our denominator in the first equation, or in the first rational expression, is factored. Same with the second rational expression. That's equal to negative 25 over uh, x minus 3 and x plus 2. Okay. So in this particular case, our non-permissible values, you can see from the denominators, are x cannot equal 3 and x cannot equal negative 2. Uh, next, your common denominator in this particular case is, you can see, uh, x minus 3 and x plus 2. Okay, uh, So what we can do here is multiply uh, this first rational expression by x minus 3. It's missing part of the common denominator. The second rational expression uh, by x plus 2. And our third rational expression doesn't need to be multiplied at all because it already has uh, the common denominator. So in this particular case, uh, to rewrite this, we're going to have 3x times x minus 3 over our common denominator minus 5 times x plus 2, again over our common denominator, is equal to negative 25 over our common denominator. So after I multiply both sides by that common denominator, I'm going to be left again with an equation of the numerators. Okay, uh, So we're going to be left with 3x times x minus 3 minus 5 times x plus 2 is equal to negative 25. So in this particular case, after I expand, I'm left with 3x squared minus 9x minus 5x minus 10 is equal to negative 25. And after I make this quadratic equation equal to 0, I'll be left with 3x squared minus 14x plus 15 is equal to 0. Uh, this particular quadratic equation you could solve uh, by using the quadratic formula. You could use uh, 3 is equal to a, 14 is equal to b, 15 is equal to c. I'm not going to do that. You could use uh, decomposition, which is totally valuable. You might want to go to my videos on um, chapter 4, section 2. Or you could use guess and check or a variety of other methods. Uh, I'm just going to factor it by guess and check. Uh, 3x times x is absolutely 3x squared. And finally, they both have to be negative and multiply to, fi to 15, and outside and inside have to add to negative 14. So in this particular case, uh, my guess is going to be minus 3 here and minus 5 here. And you'll see that that's a correct guess because this makes minus 9x, this makes minus 5x, and that does make the minus 14x. All right, so uh, in this particular case, we have two solutions. From this particular factor, we have x is equal to positive 5 thirds. And from this particular factor, we have x is equal to 3. Uh, you're done the question as long as you check to see if either of these is an NPV. And the one that is an NPV is x equals 3, so it can't. So we actually have only one solution. So our solution to this question is x is equal to Sorry, it should be positive 5 thirds, my bad. Uh, x is equal to positive 5 thirds or 5 thirds.